friends because you meet them and this lifetime and you're like, I know you for like a thousand years. So that's like this person and she's amazing. I absolutely adore her. She has such a presence of light and love and it's just so grounded in her body and just who she is in the world. And I think it was about a week ago, she came to me and shared that um, she's, she has this amazing new business expansion and it's called the Center for Kindness. And I just feel like the time right now in our world, it's so important for this. And not only is she a living example of this, she has so many ways that people can now connect with her work. So Andrea, I'm so, so happy to have you on the show. Welcome, welcome. And I call her my Reiki teacher, even though she's not not, but it's because she embodies the presence of energy of unconditional love. And so she also teaches Reiki. She just didn't teach me Reiki, but she really, again, is that embodiment of love. So welcome, welcome to the show. We're so happy you're here. Thank you so much for having me, Abby. It is an absolute pleasure. And everything you've said to me in return to you, as if you, if you haven't met or worked with this dear woman, she is an amazing light as well. So thank you for having me. I'm so excited to talk about the Center for Kindness. Yeah. So I know in every cell of my being that your intuition guided you to create it. So I'm curious how that was for you, how your intuition basically said, Hey, like this needs to happen. Like, how did it come to, and how are you open to receive your intuitive guidance? Well, good question. So honestly, I have been on the journey for holistic health and wellness for, oh gosh, I, I really say most of my life. I always, you know, you go back to hearing the stories of always felt a little different as a kid, but I think really the ultimate uh, changing point for me was um, it, after graduating college, I studied uh, psychology and anthropology and, and loved neuroscience and all those fun, you know, great things of the mind. Um, I actually was in a really terrible accident and I received a traumatic brain injury. Uh, And so through years of recovery, I worked with amazing doctors, hospitals, all kinds of, you know, went through neuro rehab programs. But regardless of all of that, over the course of about three years during recovery, I just continued to feel as if there was a missing part of me. And so I was led to holistic health, wellness, and a lot of the therapies that uh, the kind of, the Center for Kindness will be offering. Uh, so ended up studying and, and getting a PhD and a doctorate in an alternative health and healing and clinical hypnotherapy. I love to learn. So I think I gobbled up everything <laughs> I could from nutrition and herbology and aromatherapy. Of course, love, love, love being a Reiki master. That spiritual practice has completely revolutionized and changed my world. Uh, What other worlds can you play with chakras and crystals and just have the best days of your life? So all of those things have just kind of become a, a culmination of a dream to have a center that all falls under one umbrella and really helps work with people individually, groups, uh, being able to speak and do seminars. I, uh, having been the dean of a holistic college, I love teaching. I, I love doing classes. I just love introducing people to concepts that are really just simple and pure and full of love. So the Center for Kindness uh, really encapsulated all of that. And I think now more than ever, we are in a time in this world where it just feels right. It feels good. Uh, going back to those research roots, I love looking at what modern science is doing today. You know, we are actually proving scientifically that working with a kind heart, having, choosing happiness, being a better, more helpful person coming from a state of gratitude is actually helping us to live longer, more satisfying lives and make more money throughout our life, which is amazing to me. I think I've I've heard things as much as a million dollars in a lifetime can be made just through simply being a happier person because it attracts so much more to you. So I, I'm happy about all of that. It's, it's, you know, life is worth living and just live joyously and, and purely. So 
So Andrea, I'm wondering, how did you feel your intuitive guidance come through? Because I feel, I know we all have yes. purposes, right? And our intuition is guiding us to live those purposes. So for me, when I heard your news, I was like, uh, yeah, like, I know this is your intuition. I'm so happy yes. to be a part of your world and let's share it. So how did you open up to receiving your intuitive guidance to now be living more of your purpose? I have always been a practitioner of mindfulness and stillness. And I find that sometimes in my most quiet and still moments, I get the greatest clarity. Um, and absolutely intuition, that gut feeling, that instinct that you have is something that you can develop. You should never ignore uh, those inner voices. You know, your guides uh, definitely always lead you in the right direction. For me, um, I have had so many amazing experiences with that. I think uh, I've had so many pivot points in my life uh, through that inner, inner guidance and inner tuition. Uh, I found one time uh, I, I had actually had another illness and was going in a different career direction. And I actually found I was walking on Mission Bay in San Diego and a man came and sat down on the bench next to me. It's a great story. I don't think I've told you this one. Um, and he was an older man and you could tell, you know, maybe had some earlier onsets of dementia or whatnot. And, and he actually sat down and all of a sudden became very, very clear and just said, you know, you know what you need to do in life. You need to pursue alternative health and some of these other therapies and schooling venues that you're going through right now. And it was almost as if he knew me. Uh, truly as if he directly knew me and had known me for years and just spoke powerfully and clearly to me. And then a moment later, just kind of shifted and was like, oh, I'm sorry, did I bother you? I, I was just sitting down. Sometimes I space out a little bit. So call that guide work, call that, uh, you know, some sense of directly, not even far stronger than intuition being brought to you. Um, that definitely are the, those are the signs I watch for. Uh, but more directly uh, in, the la in the last few weeks, in the last over the last few months, I've really felt myself uh, in, in the times that we are here in now November of 2020, right? <laughs> yeah, feeling guided. <laughs> uh, you know, we, we are all in a very unique situation worldwide. We've got a pandemic, we've had political changes. We've had so many different things that have put additional pressures on us as people in society and community. And I really have felt a strong pull to encourage community to act with more compassion um, and in a greater sense of integrity. So I think those, just what's going on around the world has really <laughs> opened up my heart, has opened up my mind to being aware of just the simplest act of kindness, smiles, hellos, uh, just reaching out to anyone, you know, you never know what their day is like and it can have such an, a tremendous ripple effect and change. So those are the things that I just listen and feel the heart and move from there. Yeah, I was just gonna say like seeing um, from the heart, I remember when I was in high school, my best um, girlfriend at the time, she, um, I said, everybody's beautiful, Cammie, because like, I just see everybody from my heart, everybody's beautiful. And so I think if we really, um, connect with our heart and send that heart light to everybody we can see the truth and we naturally will respond and kindness right and honesty i think honesty leads to more integrity and then being willing to work with that right i know in my own life yeah. it's like okay like here's the truth and i know it so i gotta move with it right and kind of like the change of tides or whatever it is and you just kind of go with it but what is your heart telling you and what does your intuition know and i love that you mentioned your gut feeling because to me, that's like the inner compass, right? Because I know for me, like my heart genuinely loves everyone. And so I could just go, 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 go. And then I have to listen to my gut as the compass that says, yes, go here or no, don't go there. Right. So you infinitely love. And because we're inter um, dimensional, like infinite beings, right. We can love wherever we're at. And then our guidance of our intuition is that compass that embodies intuition, right. And says, Hey, go here or go there. And it's the highest for everyone. So 
I think just really listening to that and feeling what we're moved to do from inspiration, um, that is our intuition guiding us, right? When we talk about guidance, to me, intuitive guidance is inspiration. It's of the light. It feels good. It resonates. Like I was listening to one of my classes and I talked about resonance. I'm like, oh yeah, I need to remember resonating feels good, right? It's like harmony, right? Like yes. you and I talk, like it's so easy. Like you can feel the resonance, there's a oh, sense of peace, right? I absolutely, I well said. And I think that your body and mind spirit, when they really are in a true alignment and when you are working from the highest center and place of good, you can tune in to cues that your body really does give you those little tingles when you get goosebumps. Um, you know, so many of those things that just feel like life's decisions are opening up to a very easy sense and state of flow. Those are all great concepts in positive psychology um, and things that really enhance that center for to intuition. Um, I think that when we work in a place that makes us feel good, that kind of vibrational energy that we send out truly is such a law of attraction that it opens up doors. It it attracts others to you. And when you are in that state of flow, it feels good. I think we've all had those moments where we can continue moving forward and we're trying to figure out how to stay in that always. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And for whatever reason, um, to not take things personal. So I know lately for whatever reason in my life, I've noticed how people are kind of like saying things to me that truly aren't true about me. And they're kind of like being deflected because I'm staying in that place of kindness for me and for them and just knowing it's not true. So I feel at a global level, there's lots of energies happening. And I think the people that got my um, email on my newsletter list, I talked about how there was a lot of calls coming in about, hey, Abby, I'm feeling constricted. I'm feeling like I can't breathe. I feel like this energy of oppression. And I think we're all feeling this energy at a global level and it's how we respond. So when we know the truth of our heart, we drop into that knowing within, we can respond with love and kindness, which sometimes means not even reacting to things or energies that are like kind of thrown at us. They can literally bounce off. It's like the light, right? And I think one of my greatest things that I love is the sun, right? Like feeling yourself like the sun, like it radiates light out and it's like, oh, I feel the warmth, the light, the love that I am, the I am presence and calling that in and then seeing the divine and everyone and everything, but not engaging in those lower frequencies. And I feel like that's where we can stand up taller in the light, right? And then be an example of that. Um, but for whatever reason, I'm just feeling guided to share that, you know, if there's anything you're experiencing in your life that doesn't feel right, or somebody or the world or something is, you're feeling that energy, something's coming at you, just know you don't have to believe it. You don't have to choose it. You can actually choose love and kindness for yourself, first and then others right or not even necessarily for yours for both it's one and the same right I mean my kindness for myself is the same for Andrea it's like I can send it to her first and then to me right like it's kind of one and the same right like it's one to talk radio right like I love it that's why I love this this show I mean I think it's beautiful so I feel is there anything you want to add to that I just it's just kind of I, I feel like you absolutely hit the nail on the head with the reaction and response you know, taking yeah. a moment, I think there's so many movements right now that encourage kindness for a reason that really do look at mindfulness and having a state of awareness and a place of unity and non-judgment because so many things are happening in the world right now. And so taking a moment in stillness to kind of sit and process whatever you are re reacting to before responding to it is so key having that moment of peace having that moment of compassion you know i think one of the biggest things is our world now is more polarized than it has ever been i i could never have imagined that we would we we would be as polarized and different in different places was as we are now but i think it is incredible and actually a testimony to how unique every individual is that we can be in these different places. I think a goal of kindness work is to try to bring people together and put them into each other's shoes. You know, I think I, I one of my favorite books of all time is To Kill a Mockingbird. 
and to go back into that state of never judging a person until you've walked a mile in their shoes. So as we take a moment before we respond to something, uh, if we can come from a place of non-judgment, if we can come from a place of compassion and light and love, not only does it help us feel kinder, does it help us have a better day? There are these physiological changes and effects that happen within our body, mentally and physi physiologically, as we choose to be happy, uh, that I think are, are massively underestimated and that people are really starting to hunger for right now. And that is why you see so many people starting to meditate, choose mindfulness, choose happiness, uh, you know, and really develop their intuition and, and honor those spaces. And I think there are body cues, like you were saying, you know, and sometimes your intuition, it definitely speaks through your body and it can say no to something. You might feel really anxious about something or tense and it's kind of like, oh, well, maybe there's a reason. Maybe that isn't in resonance. Um, and then to move back to that place you said of non-judgment, which I love because that's part of what I teach and do my best to practice as well. And what I want to tie it to is the center for kindness, because when you think about it, the center for kindness, the embodiment of that is your intuition. The center for kindness is the core of you. It's your spirit, which is pure unconditional love and doesn't judge. Now, I think our really important word to bring is discernment. So like I talked about, the body can have cues of, oh, I feel anxious. I feel tight. This doesn't feel right. That's discernment. That's like, don't go down that road because there's something there that will not serve you most likely. And, and the opposite of that, if you want to take the polar opposite, well, this, this path, when I go over here, it feels very light and expansive. Awesome. I think I'll take that path because my body and my center knows, and that's the center of kindness within myself, which then I can then radiate into others. So, you know, to global level teaching this center for kindness, I think is so beautiful because it can be online. It can be in any physical center. It can be a way of being. And that's why I'm so passionate about sharing this movement with you, Andrea, because I think it's, it's so within us and within our control to do yes. right. Like so much we feel is maybe out of our control, but our choice and our ability to respond is within our control. Truly. And it's free. It's something we all have the innate ability to do at any time we can from moment to moment, we can consciously choose to respond to someone differently. We can consciously choose to interact with them in a way that is going to share some light and some love and joy with them. And to see that kind of radiating kindness, that positivity ripple outwards is, is something that I, I honestly really truth, do think becomes addictive in its own sense, because you have these amazing releases of endorphins and and, and you're actually changing the way you think and feel. Uh, I think it attracts people to you. Uh, getting back to your points of where you feel that, definitely that heart center. People often do describe the heart as your center, but some people also can feel things deep in their gut. If, if you sometimes feel... I guess it's that feeling of being suspicious or maybe you don't trust someone. Oftentimes some of that intuition can resonate in your gut. You can also have a very mental approach to it. Uh, so we really do process intuition through, it may be through our mind, through our heart or right there in the, in the stomach, in the gut. And I think listening and honoring that and developing that is, is an instinct that is helpful in all form and sense of community. I love working with kids. I love working with businesses. I think this, this communication style is just important and, and profound. It really is. Mm -hmm. So sorry, I just, I'm so amazed by the synchronicity of the universe. So you know how we were talking about a mutual I can probably say friend, see more yeah. Copeland, you know? Yeah. So you just sent me a text as you're talking about it. Cause I had said, um, expansion of all hearts this morning, I sent him a little, I am message. And he said back at you, it was great to see you in person. You're such a unique soul. And I applaud your style and special contribution to our peaceful world. So as we're speaking kindness, that message came in. 
And I'm sharing this with you because it's all vibration. And he was the founder of School of Healing Arts, which is now the International School of Healing Arts, um, also in Europe. And he does work here too. I don't know that, I don't think the school is here anymore. And then I turn my phone over and on my phone, it says, build your dream business. And there's a little flower on it now that says, build our dream business. Aww. And so I think when you come from that place, that frequency of kindness, notice what comes back into your world. Notice how we unite as one in the center for kindness, what you're giving out, you're getting back. And so, you know, Seymour and I've always had that very non-judgmental, unconditional, loving, respectful relationship. And so when you stay in that heart place, just watch. And Andrea, I'm feeling guided to ask you like, because I know you have told me you do, that you have a blog that's going to be available where people can actually yeah. practice you know being in their heart having that center for kindness within them so do you want to share a way that they can get access to that and access to you to, to really embody this yes so we have just gone live on uh, the on our website uh the center for kindness all one word and i will be continuing to update and add new articles and videos in all walks of health and wellness and all kindness-based activities. Um, I personally have a background in nutrition and food. So I think right now the world, as we're getting into winter, wants mm -hmm. to say, gosh, how can we raise our immunity? What can we do with teas and foods? So we'll be seeing some great, amazing foods, explaining those and the recipes and how to prepare them. And for me, you know, that is one physical manifestation of how you can share kindness and love. You know, I mean, food is our medicine. Medicine is our food. And mm -hmm. when you can cook something with love and kindness and give it and share it with others, I mean, just, it tastes amazing. Uh, we recently, I'll share, we recently, went to an amazing juice bar and just the energy and vibration of, of clean foods is incredible but uh, we'll also be having little uh, little moments of meditation a two-minute relaxation so just little things that you can do throughout your day to help you center help you reconnect with uh, some some heart-centered kindness and hopefully you can share that with your family your kids your your neighbor whoever whoever you might think could use a little bit of extra love in the day that's awesome. I love yeah. it. So beautiful. So I'm kind of taking this whole non-judgment thing a few levels deeper. <laughs> so I'm like, if that works for you, I'm like, so, you Please, know, yeah. um, to me, non-judgment for others is pretty easy. And I feel like I'm at a much better place with myself, but I'm wondering if you have any ways to kind of self-compassion with that. So not judging ourselves yeah. because I know it's easy, at least for me, I could be like, oh, well, I could have done that differently or something, right? Which is judgmental instead of yeah. looking yes. at it from a place of unconditional love. So I'm just seeing like layers of it, right? So yes. do you have any guidance it's, for- it's a, it, we, are, we are really peeling an onion. So really it's, I feel like it's really hard to have a healthier, happier, kinder you that can help the world unless you yourself are coming from a place that is help, healthy, happy, and kind. And so really starting with taking away those judgments of yourself, taking away anything that creates a sense of negativity. And while that sounds, that sounds a lot easier because you might have those internal stories that you have been processing your whole entire life, you know, take a moment just to sit and to be still and to release and to, I like to almost look at it, uh, it's a hypnotherapy technique. You can actually put it into a box and you can just look at it. It, it is not a judgment place, but try to cast out anything that is giving you a negative sense of self and figure out why, why is that coming from? You know, it really is. I think you mentioned earlier, it is all about energy and vibration and, you know, I, I was just reading how we're starting to actually be able to measure the human sense of consciousness as a, an electromagnetic energy. And so when you are attracting negative thoughts and negative judgments on yourself, this effect affects your emotional state, your mental state, but your physical state too. It really can cause illness. It creates inflammation. Inflammation leads to disease. So you actually make yourself sick from coming from a place of, of judgment and negativity. Wow. So what a beautiful huh, way to bring it together of how 
our bodies are the instrument of intuition. And literally when you're disconnected from love, disconnected from yourself, your body sends inflammation, like on fire, like yes. energy, disease, disconnection from the yeah. truth of you, which is pure love. Yes. And, and I like, always like to look at that? the, I like to look at the word disease and it really is dis ease. So when your body is in a state of not being at ease, you tend to get sick, you get those inflammatory issues that, you know, create headaches, muscle joint aches, pains, you know, further and more serious illnesses. So taking care of yourself really from a, a physical level, you know, from a nutritional level from, you know, an herb, you know, herbology is fantastic. There are so many amazing plants and nutrients found in nature that are there for us. Those are absolutely incredible healing elements. And, you know, taking that physical, taking the mental, taking away that piece of judgment on yourself that's so hard and critical of you, peeling again, those layers of an onion back, those emotional pains and hurts, um, and taking yourself out of being in a place of being a victim and, and recognizing we're all human beings. We are, we are in a human body. I like to say we are all absolute spiritual beings in our human body and acknowledge being human. People are not going to be perfect all of the time. Um, and forgive yourself, forgive others. You're going to maybe misjudge a statement or comment and that's okay. You know, just try to reflect on it and give it a moment and, you know, again, put yourself in their shoes and try to have some compassion before responding to something. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Some reason the word core is coming to mind. So if you bring your awareness from your head to your heart, to your core and move mm -hmm. into that center, just seeing that golden light, I believe, and I know, I absolutely know. And every cell of my being at our core is pure love. And so if you move through the layers, I love the onion thing to the actual core, you're going to experience a lot of essence of that onion and of yes. you, right? And at that core is pure love. And so I think if you radiate from that outwards and remember who you are, it's like the sun, right? And it's just, it's coming to light. And that place of non-judgment is almost natural when you really hit the core of love and radiate out how could you judge? Because you know, at your deepest core, you probably were coming from love to take care of yourself and others and vice versa. Like you said, some walking in somebody else's shoes, they probably were doing the same. And so it's fascinating to me how it all works. And I think the alignment piece and the resonance piece comes together when like two hearts meets or two energies meets the energy come into alignment. Right. And then it's like, yes, that's when manifestation occurs. Right. Like I've talked about divine timing. And I think it's really when like you know, you and the universe meet, those intentions meet with the energy, you know, that you're calling in. And then you call that manifestation. It's physical. It's here, you know? And I think we can all resonate with that. I think we can all remember a time in our life where you walked into a room or you met someone for the first time who just had such an incredible, sparkling, amazing energy that not only did it draw you to them, it just attracted everyone around them. And that is, I think, someone coming from a very pure, clean, centered place. And that is that resonation of energy. That is that kindness energy. And they have really activated on that core level to attract happiness and joy in their lives. Yeah, totally. I love it. And I think to use your intention as we're talking about center for kindness and intuition. So your intention and your intuition can marry each other in your vision, right? And then come into your heart and then into the manifestation and then notice where you're guided, where your center for kindness is leading you, <laughs> yes. you know? So cool. And and when you can expand those bubbles. So if you if you if we go back to the onion of going to that center core, we can actually build that energy from the inside out too and kind of pop out and expand that expressive energy to share with others. And you know, that is really the work we do that I think just I have always said when you're really working from a place of joy, you can't wait to work. You can't wait to, you can't wait to wake up every day, right? Right. 
<laughs> I know I wake up so early and it's like, yeah, it's like, I don't even feel like I have a job. You know what I'm saying? It's just, I get to do what I do and I love people so much. And it's just like, yeah, you get to be who you are and that's the greatest gift. Right. And I teach people to monetize your gifts. You could do that. And, and maybe you don't, and that's okay too. You know, it's not necessarily your purpose to have to monetize your gifts, but you can choose, you know, and I think it's a beautiful way to share, you know, and that exchange yeah. is from pure love. And I think honoring how, again, how different everyone is, you know, I think I'm constantly learning from people about, you know, and, and that's that change of approach of, you know, following your intuition and, and perhaps saying, you know, Hey, you know, maybe this person is not my, my cup of tea. They have a different vibrational energy than me, but learning something from them. Every person is an, is an opportunity to interact with and learn something. And I think that you're presented with these opportunities continuously and how you respond to people who might challenge you or might upset you or might hurt you gives you an opportunity to become a stronger internal person uh, and, and feeling your light really walking in your truth and acknowledging those, those differences so funny. I just heard the word truth right before you said it. It's like the truth will set you free. And I really do just even see that beam of golden light again. And it's fascinating. It was great guided to wear gold today. And it's bringing in that energy of truth, right? And blue is expression like you're wearing. And so it's like the truth will set you free because your body knows the resonance of truth. That's why <laughs> just getting that right. So yeah. you're free in yourself because you're in truth, you're in integrity with you and the world, truly. Um, so I think to believe in yourself and know that as you come from that place, just by law, you will be met with the universe matching you, right? So if you're coming yes. from love, you'll come from love. You're coming from integrity, you'll be met with integrity, right? So like, just know that. And it just, um, and I think the blocks can kind of clear out when we become aware. We become aware of what's stopping us from living in our truth right? Or from even the truth. And, from and it's, it really is fear-based. I think we, these are lessons. There's so many, I like to look at so many of these challenges as lessons in life and an opportunity to grow. And I think so many of these things that stop us in our tracks and give us doubt and weigh us down really are fear-based. And fear is simply a way for you to bring yourself to a, a heightened state of awareness to change something. Why are you feeling afraid? Where in your body, what is resonating? What is, what is off center? How can you adjust that sensation interaction uh, that's creating that sense of fear to a place of understanding? And love. It's almost like, how can mm -hmm. you bring fear to love? So yeah. you can then resonate with a frequency that matches and is rooted in the foundation of love. Yeah. And when you really come around to recognizing fear, some people call it darkness, some, you know, the negativity, when all of those things can be transformed and transmuted and processed through you through a place of light and love and kindness, it really does come full circle. And that gives you that incredible feeling of unity. And you realize we are all one. And what we do, what we say, is only an extension of what other people need to hear in so many cases. Yeah. And we may not even know why. That's a fascinating thing. <laughs> you know, I don't, this is literally being channeled for me. I don't even know why I'm saying that. It's like sometimes we don't even know why. And we say something, right? Like that person that came to you. And I remember this was years ago. Somebody in Ross's was like, hey, or, or I was on the phone or something. I just remember somebody saying, you need to write a book, like, like out of the blue. That's and I'm right. like, I know. And a lot of people were saying that at that same time. And I literally wrote my first book in four days. And I actually <laughs> only have one book right now. I just have another one coming out hopefully soon. I just need to finish writing it. But that book, Touch the Light, was written in four days. And because when you talk about those signals you need for intuition, those are like the great big knock right on your door saying, hey, open up. It's time to do this. Yeah. So I guess just listen and, and you don't know why somebody tells you something or you tell somebody else something, but it's some higher involvement that again, I feel meeting in the heart center and connecting to your center for kindness to create that foundation of love, because then I, I believe that is what sustains, right? Like I remember I studied with Sonia Choquette for a long time and she said, love is the best marketing tool. And that really is how I started and still do my company. Like 
even when I was 19, like, okay, I can be in love. Like that'll be the best marketing tool. And I mean, I had some amazing people and colleagues that helped lift me up because they saw the love. And so it was the best marketing tool, right? And then I had these opportunities from love. So when you meet your fear with love, like you said, like, where is that fear coming from? Can you meet it with love and see what that fear needs to come into resonance with love? So then you can stand solidly in who you are, which is the presence of love and then be the change that we all want to see, right? More love, more light. I believe, I don't mean to speak for anybody, but I'm just assuming people listening to this want more light and love. And so that radiates, but we have to become that. So, you know, to not deny the fear, but to bring it into alignment with love so it can heal. Absolutely. We, we have, it is, we are beings of free will and we get to make a choice, a conscious choice every day. Do we get to choose happiness or are we going to live in fear? Are we going to live in a state of negativity? And really we, time will pass regardless of, of whatever we want to do, but it is how we choose to pass that time. So why not choose happiness? Why not have a center in your heart that promotes kindness and joy and truth and integrity and share that with others? Because truly that energetic vibration resonates and ripples out to the world around us. And then you find that all the people that you connect with suddenly are in a great place. You find that, you know, the decisions that you're making, the things you need with your family or with work are flowing in a really natural, happy state. And, you know, people will say, gosh, how do you have such a blessed life? How do you, how did you get so lucky? It is not luck. It really is conscious choice. Hmm. Wow. I so love this. I am feeling like, like my heart's just like, whoa, it's just totally expanding with light. Cause it's like, we just had the privilege of having lunch together. And I don't know if you noticed, but the place that we went to where we got that juice, it actually said, choose happiness. Did you know that? Yes. Yes. <laughs> I mean, it is, it is what, what we're doing here. I always say is not new. Um, it's just really, it, I'm so happy to see that it is becoming so important and such a forefront, uh, you know, of, of business, of philosophy, of how we raise our children, of just choosing kindness, of choosing happiness, of having it coming from a place, a true centered place of love, of an attitude for gratitude is, is what I like to spread around. Yeah. So. so beautiful. And I think no matter how anybody has treated you or is treating you now, you can actually still choose happiness because you're in your heart and you can move into that greater joy and expansion of, you know, the divine light. So I just, I love that we have that much power to choose. Yes. You and know? exactly like we were saying from moment to moment, you could have something bad happen to you in the day that feels bad, that feels negative, but how you proceed from there, it doesn't have to ruin your whole day. You can make that conscious choice to stop right there and come from a more positive place and readjust that, reshape that so that it actually becomes something that you can respond to positively. And it will change it that, that little, that tiny little choice of word of belief of thought will change and affect the whole rest of your day. So we never have to be trapped in a state of negativity, of darkness. Uh, you know, we, we really do have the ability to control that moment to moment. Yeah, it's funny. So I was talking to my cousin last night and she was using the word responsibility. And I yeah. used to really not like that word because I would take it as like, oh, it's my fault. And she's like, no, 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 it's actually not. She's like, you're not wrong. It's not your fault. Like, responsibility means to respond actually, but to have the ability to change it, to like pivot the thought, like exactly what you're saying. Like I can actually take responsibility. No, I have choice now. Yes. So it's actually a PowerPoint. And I thought about Alyssa. She's also been on the show and she talks about um, pivoting. So yes. like, you know, you have like, it's going one way and then you're like, oh, I'm in a pivot. And it's like, I've been a basketball player before. I haven't really for a long time, but I played in high school and college and you pivot, right? You're going in this direction and you actually pivot away. And it's like, 
the direction and you can score a point really quick once you pivot. And so it's so fun to just kind of flow and pivot as you follow your joy and like, don't make it mean anything. Like don't have that judgment, just kind of flow with it. So it's just fun. I just keep seeing a river, you know, you're just kind of flowing down the river to this great expanse of the ocean and then just seeing what comes, you know, like beautiful dolphins within a few feet of you, you know, like it's just, <laughs> You know, it's there. It's Taking those matter. moments to appreciate and realize and really see the world around you. Um, and I think in, in so many ways, there have been so many benefits to 2020 and, and everything that has happened in this year. You know, it is, it really does get down that word pivot, I think has used, has been used Everyone now, I think, in businesses is aware of the concept of pivoting and being able to be flexible in business and change how we interact with each other from doing more things online to having touchless contact sales points and all of these things. But pivoting in how we communicate with each other, with our families, you know, to be able to, you know, do more video conferencing, do more phone calls have that connection having that connection i think in, in in a lot of ways this has brought people into a heightened awareness that it is important to have a place of connection and to be able to see the beauty in the world and our surroundings yeah i love that and just notice where connection shows up maybe it's not where you thought it would show up but notice where it does yeah and and i think to take the time to acknowledge that, you know, I, I started making a promise to myself after I, I had my mother was very, very ill about uh, two years ago, and I went up to my hometown to take care of her. And it was honestly such an incredible lesson in healing and love and compassion for me. And, and I feel like with both of my parents, it gave me the opportunity to completely change and transform my relationship with them, which was so powerful in your adult life to be able to reconnect and then have a completely different relationship with them. And it really did get down to having the patience and the kindness to understand and respect everyone's differences and to know that we all really are trying to do what is best for one another. Sometimes it feels like that doesn't align quite right, but having that patience and stepping back and, and, and knowing that they really do want to support you. And I feel like so many of the miscommunications in the world today are people coming, you know, maybe responding a little bit too quickly and having that judgment. And if we can just step back and calm down, take a moment to say, hey, you know, are they, are they really trying to attack me here? Or where can we meet on a common ground? How can we come together? And that piece of that place of peace. Yeah, totally. I love that. Yeah. Well, I'm going to go ahead and open the phone lines. If anybody wants to call in um, for either a question for Andrea or me, you can call 858-692-4555. Again, it's 858-692-45555 um, and ask us a question. And if not, we'll just keep on going, but I'd like to open the lines. Um, let's see, is there anything else that you would like to share, um, Andrea, that comes through? Well, uh, let's see. So I'm, I like, as we discussed, I'm just opening up, very excited to share with everyone the Center for Kindness. Um, we will be continuing to update, put on all kinds of information on blogs, through videos, and eventually we are actually going to be opening up a kindness store. And a lot of the things sold on that store, a uh, big piece of the proceeds will go to donating to different charitable causes. So I think being able to give back is, is something that I really feel is, is a foundation piece that I wanna be able to share with the world making it a little nicer and kinder every moment. I love it. Well, go to oneheartglobal.co, babe. You can, you can help our nonprofit there. That's so awesome. I love it. <laughs> exactly, exactly. I'm hoping that someday, you know, we can actually uh, really have a much bigger platform and unite yeah. a lot of charitable organizations yeah. to better people's lives in a lot yeah. of different places around, in our own neighborhood and around the world, for sure. 
Totally. I love it. Um, so it is, so people can go to www.thecenterforkindness.com, correct? Yes. All one word together. See all of the different therapies and services we offer. Uh, you know, I love playing in this whole spectrum. So we're always happy to customize any session exactly to meet your needs. So uh, there's a nice little intake and then, and then we get to play and be in a place of joy and, and fun. And hopefully you leave feeling inspired and that ripple effect goes out and you can share it with your friends, family, a whole bit. It's so beautiful. That's so beautiful. Well, I just invite everybody to visit her site and really, you know, just, you know, can they respond to you? Like what their, what their guidance is, you know, you're always welcome to email me at Abby at lifeforceconnection.com. But Andrea, is there a way they could email you to kind of stay in the conversation, you know, and say, Hey, my, my center for kindness is guiding me here, you know, and just kind of <laughs> yes, this, like, yes, absolutely. Conversation, build the community. Yes, absolutely. My email is attached to the website, the center for kindness.com. And as I said, we'll be continuing to do, um, I, I really do want to give back to the community. Uh, so we'll be frequently offering free services and seminars and just fun activities, little random acts of kindness, you know, uh, things that you can do at home with your kids, things that, you know, you can do to raise a coworker's spirits at work, just little tiny acts of kindness that really send out those ripples. So there'll be so many fun ideas, activities. Um, and as I said, you know, from, from actual individual and group therapies, seminars and workshops to also really giving back to charitable organizations and offering and offering free, free seminars as well. That's beautiful. Wow. I love it. <laughs> well, that is all I have for today. It feels really complete. We're wrapping up a little bit early, but unless there's anything else you have, I just feel like it's so succinct and clear and just to be it and practice the embodiment of love and kindness and just notice where your inspiration guides you, you know, and know as you're choosing that kindness and happiness, it's just like it radiates like the sun. So, yeah. Thank, Thank you so much, Abby. As always, you are just a beautiful shining light and a great example for all of us. So it has been an absolute joy to share this whole new uh, business with everyone here today. Thank you so much. It's a movement. It's a movement. It really is. It's a revolution. And, and it's yeah, easy. Perfect. It's simple. Why wouldn't you do something that just makes you feel powerful, alive, and and better in life, in your body, in your presence. It's, it's a simple, easy thing to do. Yeah. So yeah. thank you. Awesome. Just be kind. Yeah. Wow. So beautiful. All right, everyone. We'll see you next week. Have a great, beautiful week. <laughs> Bye.